Hey y'all, this is Jeremy from Production Den. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be covering how to record vocals in FL Studio. But before we jump in, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you can get alerted every time that we upload a new video. So let's jump in. So there's some basic equipment that you need to be able to record vocals in FL Studio. Today I'm gonna to be using a condenser microphone that has a head basket. It connects to a microphone stand and I have a pop filter, an XLR cord, and that goes into my audio interface. And once I have everything connected into the audio interface, I need to make sure that I turn the phantom power on, which is that plus 48 volt button that's usually somewhere right around the gain knob for the particular channel that you're plugging into. And make sure that you have everything connected before you turn that on, because if you don't, you could potentially damage your microphone. And since it's a big purchase, you wanna protect it and make sure that you have it for the long haul. Now that we have everything connected physically, we need to go inside of FL Studio and make sure that we have everything routed correctly to be able to record the audio. So let's jump in there. Press F10, that will bring up the settings window. We're gonna go over to the audio tab, which is the second tab. And the thing that you need to do here is make sure that FL Studio is pulling audio from your audio interface. And what that means is selecting the driver for your audio interface. It may be that when you first plug in your audio interface to your computer, that it does a little bit of an installation of a driver. You may wanna look for an updated driver if you start having some problems with this. But what you wanna look for is the ASIO driver for your particular audio interface. So mine is the PreSonus audio box that I'm using, so I wanna make sure that I'm using the audio box ASIO driver, which I am. And then this next window is for the buffer length. And the thing with the buffer length is you wanna set it really low for when you're recording, but when you're mixing, you can set it up higher and that will help you with issues when you have a lot of processing going on for your computer. 256 is a good one to shoot for. Sometimes if you start hearing crackles and pops, you might have to bump that up to 512, but just mess around with your settings to find the one that doesn't give you any crackles and pops or issues with latency while you're actually singing. And now I need to come out here to the mixer window if you don't have your mixer window, press F9 and that will bring up the mixer window. I'm gonna find a blank insert. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use or insert 13. And now I have to set this up to be able to receive audio from the audio interface. So now I'll come over here to this drop down menu, which is on the right side, and I will select input one, which is the one that my microphone is on. Don't select this one, the stereo one, because you're, you're only plugged into one source. So you wanna make sure that you're using the mono source and using the input that the actual microphone is plugged into. So in my case, it's input one. And I'm gonna mute it so the audio is not coming through. But once you have that coming in, then you need to start adjusting the levels for your vocals to get it to be hitting around here in that like minus nine to minus 16 range on the meter. And that will give you a good clean signal that you can work with to make sure that you don't have a lot of other stuff going on in your song. So adjust your gain knob to make sure that that's working. And once you have that set up, then you can start setting up to actually record. So right now you can see that this arm recording button is on. So you can right click on it and it'll bring up the window of where you're going to save that file to. And you can select a different folder if you want to, or you can put it where you wanna put it to be able to use it later. Um, and you wanna name it something that you'll be able to go back and figure out what it is. So for this one, I'm gonna call it like vocal scratch. And I'll do V2 since I've already done one. And so now it's armed for recording. So I wanna also make sure that the settings up here are set up the way that I want them for when I start to record. You may or may not want the metronome on, which is this one. It can sometimes help you keep track of time, but if it's too loud, it actually might be picked up in your microphone. So be aware of that. And I also like to put on this countdown timer, which is this one right here, which will count in before it actually starts recording. So it'll be like a three, two, one, and then it starts recording. And that just gives me a little bit of time to get adjusted and ready to sing and make sure that like the loop is not necessarily on unless you're planning on just doing a section over and over and over. Make sure you're in song mode, so that way it will record into the playlist. So go ahead and right click also on the record button and make sure that the audio selection is checked and then make sure that recording starts on playback is also checked. As you do that, you're basically ready to record. You can either hit the record button 
or you can press R on your keyboard and that will start the recording. And when you wanna stop the recording, you can press the space bar. So I'll show you a quick demo of basically making a, a simple recording with that. I'll just kind of pick you guys up and take you with me. I'm using headphones to monitor what is playing in the background. Let me just show you what's playing in here. So that'll be the, this little track that I'm singing over top of. And then I'm also gonna make sure that that's turned back on, ready to record. I'll take you guys with me. All right, so now we've gotten here, we're in front of the microphone and getting ready to record. So the thing that I'll do is I'll come back over here. I'll press the R button on my keyboard, which is down here. Everybody do the way you feel, but nobody can say just what they need to do. Everybody knows just how they want things to go, but they know it's the perfect environment. All right, now press the space bar, and so that's done. And what you'll see happens here is a new audio file has shown up down in the uh, track six. So it selected this thing, it came into the playlist. Just for the sake of this, like the audio is gonna be a little bit lower than everything else. So what I'm gonna do is actually um, go out here real quick and just normalize it so you're gonna be able to hear it. I don't suggest doing this when you're doing your actual stuff, you'll, you'll work with the audio levels as you're mixing. But just so you guys can hear what was done, I, I take the record button back off so that keeps it from recording again when I press the space bar and you'll hear the audio that we just recorded in really quickly. Everybody do you feel nobody can say. So that gives you the idea of the raw audio file got recorded in to the project and now we could go back and then process this vocal by putting it into a different track and then putting things like EQ and compression and all those things. I could create another video to show you how to process your vocals to make them sound a little bit more polished and professional. And sometimes when you're working with a vocalist, as they're recording, they may not want to hear themselves as they're singing. Some people are self-conscious about that. So there's ways that you can set up these insert tracks so that they won't hear themselves while they're singing. Or you might have singers that want to hear themselves, but want to hear themselves with some reverb or, or some other effects that make them sound good so they feel more confident while they're singing. And you can set those things up in some parallel tracks in FL Studio. And if you want me to show you how to do that, just leave that as a comment below and I will create a video showing you how to create an alternate track or how to create another track that will allow your singers to either hear themselves with some effects or to not hear themselves at all. But the main thing that you need to realize is you wanna record the raw vocal as much as possible into the program so that you can process it afterwards. You don't wanna do a whole lot of processing on the front end of it. You wanna do the processing on the back end of it. There are some cases where you might wanna do a little bit of EQ or a little bit of compression coming in, but you don't wanna do massive effects that are on the vocal that you're recording because otherwise they're just baked into the audio and you won't ever be able to do anything else. I wouldn't recommend putting things like reverbs on it or delays on it or any of those other things until after you've actually recorded the vocal. Well, I hope now you have a better understanding of my process for recording vocals in FL Studio. If you have any questions about my process, please leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to start a conversation there. Or if you wanna learn about how I record other instruments like guitar or bass, I'll leave links to those videos here as well as some links in the description below. Hopefully this was helpful for everyone and I will see you in the next round.